number one, Roger Federer took time out for a well-earned break. Beating Sampras was one thing, meeting ACDC was another. Oh, very exciting, I was so nervous in the beginning because I didn't know what to ask him. I gave him one of my rackets. He gave me, he gave me back a pick for, for a guitar. I don't play guitar yet, but maybe when I learn. Unfortunately, the home favourite lost in the opening round in straight sets, but he did get to take home a consolation prize, a pair of trademark ACDC Devil's Horns. Yes, baby. Tournament number one seed and Federer's doubles partner Marit Safin is also concerned about his headgear. Do I need a head or something? After a disappointing first round exit, perhaps career making shots of a different kind is beckoning. Definitely not, but uh, I think it, uh, I will stay playing tennis, it, uh, it's what I can do actually, and then we'll see, but definitely not modeling. Faring much better is defending champion Alex Corretcha. The Spaniard is safely through to the semi-finals and heads for the hills for some slightly more sedate off-court activities. A brief introduction to the tools of the trade and it's all hands to the pumps. Look at this. It's not quite as easy as it looks, is it, Alex? Today is the first time, so, oh, she's getting nervous, eh? so we better finish this thing. The customary autograph stop, and Corretcha seems happy with the fruits of his labor. Sebastian Grosjean opted for some high altitude training in preparation for his semi final. The number three seed, along with compatriot Cedric Pierlin, flew off for a leisurely knock-up on the glacier, where staying cool wasn't a problem, much to the amusement of the locals. It's only me. Oh. <laughs> we have a day off, and uh, that's good, you know, to change the idea and you know to to enjoy uh, one day off and. Uh, come here on the glacier, so I don't know if it's a good preparation, but it's uh, really nice. Eh? It proved to be excellent preparation for Grosjean, although Cedric Pierlin may think twice about glacier tennis. The first semi saw Yuri Novak face defending champion Alex Koreccia, a man he had never beaten before on clay. In the first set, you could see why. Having dropped the first set, a good professional will always change his tactic. Hitting the ball flatter and attacking the net, Novak appeared to have found the winning formula. A shake of the head and Correcha's challenge was all but over. Again, set a match, Novak. Novak through to his second three, final six, of the six, year. Three, six, four. For the players who were not happy being on the ground, the excitement was to be found three and a half thousand metres in the sky. Mark Rosse and Stefan Kubek, along with Stard's vice tournament director, Claudio Homanyat, decided to go skydiving over the Swiss Alps. <laughs> Whose crazy idea was this in the first place? Uh, it was mine, actually. But, uh, I mean, I'm glad that Claudio came, because kind of, uh, you know, I was like in the period that I need some uh, thrilling moment. So I asked him if he wanted to join me, and. Uh, Kubek uh, decided to join us at the last moment, so I mean, the, he did it already once, so you know, it's more easy, I guess, for him. I was very, very scared when I was on the top at like 3,500 meters, and uh, Thank you. everything <laughs> looks pretty small down there, and I can understand that uh, Mark and Claudio is a little bit nervous, but afterwards they're gonna love it. <laughs> Are we sitting comfortably? <laughs> Are we sitting comfortably? Yeah, it's fine here. Yeah. Yeah. 
maybe a few last minute nerves, but once in the air, it was difficult to tell whether it was fear or the massive adrenaline rush about to hit them as one by one, the thrill seekers leapt out of the aeroplane. The idea, it seemed, was to put your head back and not look. Falling back down to land was proving to be an unbelievable experience for the 31-year-old Swiss player. But when back on firm ground, all previous worries were all but a distant memory. When it's time to jump, you jump and I was scared like for two seconds because you're like, come on, it's not true. And then, but you know, it's like so much adrenaline coming into you. So like, you're like just happy. Uh, if I could, I would go for a second right, right now. <laughs> I love it. Whoever said that tennis players were boring? Back to business in the second semi featured Sebastian Grosjean, Spain's Juan Carlos Ferrero. When playing on clay, your game can't have a weakness and your mind must be unbreakable. <laughs> Along with touch, you need power. Ferrero has that in abundance. Not just the forehand that packs a punch, the serve of the Spaniard provides the coup de grace. Again, third match, Ferrero. Two sets to lock. Six four, six four. So Ferrero through to the final in straight sets, where Czech Yuri Novak awaits. For Ferrero, it was a chance to claim his fifth title of the year. Finals day arrived and so did the rain, forcing the match to be cut to the best of three sets. For both players, it was going to be more about who handled the conditions rather than who played the best tennis. Novak was the one to adapt better in the opening exchanges. Clearly getting frustrated and finding it difficult to move, Ferrero's woes continued. Quite right. rightly, there was concern in the Spanish camp. A set and a breakdown, Ferrero's game went into overdrive. With the young and the old trying to stay warm and dry in the stands, the match was reaching its climax. The rain continued to fall and with it, Ferrero's chances. At match point down, the Spaniard's final shot summed up his day. Okay, set match. Novak, two sets to one, six one, six seven, seven five. With that double fault, Novak ended five years of Spanish domination and claimed his second title this year. With two of his four career titles coming in altitude, Novak clearly has a head for heights.